The Gospel reading is from John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which in Hebrew means teacher. She said to her, Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went out and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. A reading from my owner again. Stooge Jesus. He was our April fool, hanging on a tree in spring, a king to mock and sniff at. He was the world's buffoon, throwing his arms around lepers like there was no tomorrow. He was a clown in the circus of the temple, except no one laughed at his table-throwing turn that day. Stood Jesus, taking the knocks from us, the divine comedian, he was a straight man to the puffed-up priests who used his new commandments as their feed lines. If he'd been a woman, he'd have been their Aunt Sally, set up for a knockdown. An apology for a Messiah who seemed to those who wanted a warrior, not a peace. peaceful fool, an eccentric 
he was, to those whose lives he changed in public, then told them to keep it secret. What a queer fish, filling Peter's tents with, feeding the 5,000 with, eating resurrection breakfast with, queer fish. What a caution to the daughter of Jerusalem, son of God's leader. Stew Jesus, taking custard pies in his face forever. The divine companion. Knock, knock. Jesus. Jesus Christ is risen today. Thank you. That was my effort of a joke. But today is April Fool's Day. Who would have thought? Resurrection Sunday falling on April 1st, April Fool's Day. <laughs> what a joke. It sounds too good to be true, really, when you think about it. Death is death, and when you're dead, you're dead. That's it. Uh, nothing, to, nothing can overcome death except some stunning reversal or some act of God. And Easter is that great act of God, the great reversal, victory over death. It's not too difficult to pause and to listen this Easter morning and hear God say, or perhaps even whispering, I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. When all seems lost, we are confronted with the very word of God who became flesh and dwelt within us. The word who was in the beginning, the word who was with God, the word who was God, the word who was life, and life was the light of the world to all people. This word, light, shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus Christ says, I am not joking. I'm not finished. And I can be so bold on, on April Fool's Day to say, do I have a hallelujah and an amen? Thank you. It's Easter. Friends have lost a mate. There is desertion in time of great need. There is a violent arrest and mockery a trial of such innocence and accusal, torture, agony, public display for the whole world to see and take notice of as warning, a slow death. Death and burial. Yet Easter Sunday is about a day that God brings about life. A reversal of fortune, a reversal of nature, and a reversal of expectation. Do I have another one of those? Hallelujah and amen. amen. That's the last time I'll do that. Maybe. But I want to invite you on a gospel journey this morning. A journey through the gospel stories of Easter and the resurrection and the garden tomb scene. Let's slip back to Mark's gospel, the earliest gospel, the other reading that's set for today. We read from John, but another time we can read from Mark 16, 1 to 16. And at the end of this story, no one is expecting Jesus to be alive. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, the Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices, not for a, a human, not for a live body, but for a dead body so that they would go and anoint him. They went to the tomb, saw the stone rolled back, entered the tomb, a young man was there, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, has been raised. He's not here. Go and tell the disciples and Peter that he's going to Galilee, and there you'll see him. And I love this bit. So they went and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Happy Easter to them. What a joke. 
Not a lot of joy at this tomb scene. No expectation. They were alarmed. They were seized with terror and frightened. They fled and said nothing. Does this sound like a great Easter message? The ending of Mark's gospel? Fear, faith, terror, silence, doubt, amazement, joke. What does Matthew say at the end of his gospel? Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb and there was a great earthquake. The angel of the Lord ascending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Obviously they were. He is not here for as he has been raised. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. It's getting better. And they ran to tell the disciples. Not bad, not a bad account of the gospel, but still an element of fear and confusion. Not something that grips you with that wow factor of Easter Sunday. Slip over to Luke's gospel. Again, the first day of the week. Early dawn, they came to the tomb taking spices that they had prepared. Again, expecting to see a body. They found the stone rolled away. They went in. They did not find the body. They were perplexed, it says, about this. And suddenly two men dazzling, with dazzling clothes stood before them. And the women were terrified. And returning from the tomb, they told the eleven and the rest. But these words seemed to them an idle tale. And they did not believe them. Not again, again, not expecting much resurrection here. I like the word perplexed. Perplexed. Say that a few times and it sort of sticks in your mind. Perplexed. Perplexed. Puzzled over what we do not understand. To confuse mentally. Perplexed turns into terrified and being basically scared. They did not believe them, the disciples said. So far, we've got no hallelujah choruses. We've got no mass of confessions of faith. You could almost hear the skeptic saying, did you hear the one about Jesus? Said he'd rise again in three days. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. But then we come to John's gospel. We had read this morning. The latest gospel we think was written. We have no mention of Mary's emotions, but she just simply ran and told Peter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. Note, only one Mary in this story, where in all the others there were lots of Marys and others. And saw the stone that had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and told Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken, she said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've laid him. And then Peter and the other disciple, who is nameless, runs to the tomb. The nameless one bends over and looks inside. Saw the wrappings, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter barges in and went into the tomb, and also the nameless disciple. And they saw, and they believed. Finally, we've got someone who believes this stuff. And it happens to be the nameless disciple. The one with no name. Still not a great start to the greatest message the world has ever known or will ever hear. But if we read on, we hear the story of Mary. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she saw two figures, receives a message and turns around, has a brief conversation with Jesus, thinking him to be the gardener. And then Jesus says to her, Mary. is she turned to him and said in hebrew rabboni which means teacher and mary went and announced to the disciples i've seen the lord or i've seen the lord it was hard for the church to get a grip on the resurrection in those days the earliest of mark's gospel ends with saying they were afraid it was not something in their experience or their comprehension. More of a joke than a reality. I must admit it, I would have my doubts if I had only had the resurrection stories and the garden tomb events to go on. 
But we have come here this morning for a reason. To this Easter Sunday, to this April Fool's Day, to hear a joke. You don't want to hear my jokes. Or because we've come because it's Easter. Why is our church nearly full this morning? On this special day. Have you come because you usually come? Some of you come because you always do. Some come because you were forced to. I'd like to rephrase. Some have come because you've been invited to. Or you've come because you're curious. And you want to find out a little bit more. But nevertheless, you're here. We are all here. Why? Why? What is it about Easter that draws us to this Sunday? Is it hope? Is it tradition? Is it the music that's up more crazy and upbeat and lively and happy? Or are you fearful that you might miss out on something? That it just might be true. But then again, maybe you think you know all about it. The resurrection stuff. But then again, maybe you don't know much about it. There is something about Easter that compels us to have a look. To have a peek in the tomb. Could it be true? It's faith. And it's your faith. No one else's. Each of you has your own measure of faith. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth from the dead is not the end of the story. The God in human history story, the word of God story, the cradle to the grave and to the cross the resurrection Sunday. But rather the story is about God bursting through what all Easter means and could mean and declaring I'm not finished yet and I'm not joking. Resurrection Sunday is the beginning of something new. Not only have we changed the cloths on the table from purple to white, but the resurrection brings life out of death, new life, possibilities, hope, promise, future. It looks beyond what we are now and what gives to faith and to hope and to love. The resurrection is central to the church, for the church would not be built on anything but risen Christ. The resurrection is unique. Christianity has a God who becomes human and lives and dies and rises to life. This very word of God, Jesus, who says in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. This Easter Sunday, this resurrection day, says the church is about moving forward. It's new life. It gives life. It gives authority to the church's witness. We only need to look at the Acts of the Apostles and letters of Paul to see that the resurrection is highly emphasized throughout the Gospels and the New Testament. The resurrection assures us that Jesus is no joke, no legend, that he's alive and real. So, why are you here today? For a joke? Or for an experience of life, new life, welling up within you. The resurrection, I think, simply means when all looks bleak, hope seems gone, death is bigger than life, and evil looms larger than good. When powers rise to overtake the weak, when doubt edges out faith, God in Christ stands up and declares to us all, to all of us, I'm not finished yet. And it's certainly no joke. Do I have a hallelujah and amen? amen. 